Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Luna Nix. And I'm Megan Gray. Hi and welcome to our reading. So our question today is what spirit guides are working with you right now? So we're going to start by working with the Keepers of the Light cards because they're going to show us um, some of the spirit guides that could be working with you. And then we're working with the Rider Waite Tarot deck and the Work Your Light Oracle cards to figure out what messages are coming from those spirit guides in question. And we'll pull you some charms and you have a crystal as always. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and that will keep you in touch with all of our readings. We've got three groups for you to choose from. Go with the one that calls out to you first because it's more likely to have the most messages that are relevant for you. I'll give you a moment to choose between group one, two or three. Hi group one, the crystal you chose is Jade. This suggests this group are our sensitives who can connect with spirit, our mediums, People who are very aware of that energy that are that is around them or even in haunted objects. If you go to a place and you can feel like someone's still there, the residual energy, we're talking to you. It's also those who are very connected to their ancestors as well. Or this is a message that's already coming through that they'd like you to work with your ancestors. Those people who have come before you, your blood lineage of this life. But of course you have ancestors in every life, so it could be different kinds. Other messages to do with this could be that you need to find more balance in your life. Hopefully the messages later on will tell you in what ways you need balance. But generally speaking, it being heart chakra based, this stone, it's about your connections, the, the cords that you have to people or things. And so maybe that's something that will come up further that you need to look at, whether they're healthy connections. It could also be that you have some unhealthy relationships in your life as well, or there's still remnants of unhealthy relationships in your heart chakra that need to be healed in order to fully embrace perhaps this gift that you have or this is just a, a warning or a a message from those guys just to say that there is some things to do with your heart chakra that you you do need to look at that um you can use this jade to really accelerate that healing as well if you've tried and it's hard or there's quite a lot of healing needed or you feel like it's going at a slower pace and you'd like, you can use this crystal in order to help it really, um, as I say, accelerate. It also does um, suggest there's quite a few things from your past or past lives that could be causing those not so good connections, not so good cords. So cord cutting could be really beneficial for you. It also really pushes you to listen to your instincts. So trust in that instinct is quite similar to intuition instinct tends to be more the lower chakras whereas intuition tends to be the third eye but it, it's just that inner voice that you need to trust and so especially when it comes to people or whether you think you should do something you really need to listen to that voice more often so as well as obviously the jade suggesting you all have an ancestor guide working with you right now which is lovely you also have archangel michael Angel Hope and Odin. So straight away this tells me and reiterates the idea you're all mediums, sensitives, psychics, people who are very sensitive to energy, particularly spirits and spirit energy as was suggested with the Jade. So I think you guys are very susceptible to actual spirits. You may have even seen what you felt were ghosts or heard things. Uh, maybe you were quite scared of them as a child and Odin's here to surround you with protection to say that um, you're leaving yourself too open actually it's maybe an untapped gift or a gift you're scared of many people have this fear about being a medium because we watch so much tv and films that tell us mediums see ghosts walking around all over the place all of the time and of course that could be true for some people but generally speaking, you're in control of your gift. It's you have the gift. The gift doesn't have you. Do you know what I mean? So it, Odin is working with you to try and help you not be afraid of this gift and understand it, work with it and protect yourself. 
and while you're trying to work on that he's there to support you um, he obviously is connected with the third eye so obviously that connection to your intuition some healing around your third eye would be a really good idea at this point Archangel Michael is very protective so for people who are struggling actually people who maybe are living in a bit of fear maybe you've got a lot going on in your life right now and he's trying to kind of support you and bring you some protection in those moments especially if you struggle with low mood um, depression anxiety that's why hope will be here to remind you that there is love and light in the world she also represents people who have a beacon of light so that again suggests this mediumship and um, psychic gift that you have you're kind of like setting off this lighthouse light beacon <laughs> at the top through your ground chakra and it's attracting maybe even spirit energy so you may have been a bit found things a bit eerie at times or felt like you've had even spirit attachments in the past or something like that because you're not being able to protect yourself so it's worth really looking into this um she's also associated with the solar plexus with a yellow beautiful light so there could be some work around that area and your confidence and your self-empowerment um and archangel michael is about the throat and being able to express your needs um so those could be areas to work on as well as those being your guides right now or at least just one of them yeah with you can call on michael to assert your boundaries and protection as well whether that is with spirit or whether that's the people these not so good connections you seem to have around you because we look at your tarot that devil card you know people always yeah. don't like that coming up but it is a warning it is saying that something in your life isn't good for you now this could be people it could be what you're consuming whether that's food um drugs drink whether it's what you're watching so luna actually did mention ghost shows and maybe you do watch those a lot but this group seemed to be ultra sensitive mm. even if it's not spirit that you can see as in people who have passed you are you are psychics in this group you pick up energy in some way um you're able to you have a knowing about you and you might not really know where it comes from but it's innate it's within you so if you are opening yourself up to certain people energies environment situations a lot you aren't cleansing yourself enough you aren't protecting yourself enough energetically or physically in some cases then this is obviously all going to come down on you really hard it could manifest as seeing as they came up it could be a lot of throat um, upper chest stomach problems digestive pro uh, problems especially you might get quite a lot of headaches um if we go with those three chakras that came up with the keepers and you're so it's more likely especially if it's an untapped gift for you to have these physical manifestations of yeah. illness of fatigue ache and so it's really important that you do do that protection and you do as we've said assert yourself your boundaries um that can be or even in your your home if it is someone who has passed and you don't want them there you don't have to have them there or you can tell them to step back it may also be that you are very aware of this gift but you aren't necessarily always disciplined in being careful or um i suppose it's also just be careful about what you're for want of a better word dabbling in so straight away ouija boards come to mind whenever we talk about this kind of thing but there are other techniques that if you're not necessarily ready for it or you aren't prepared for it then it can actually cause some harm depending on who you connect with and how confident which again why that solar plexus may have come up in what you're doing before you actually don't feel like you have to do anything you don't really feel comfortable about doing um and if you want some any advice or guidance surrounding mediumship you can always talk to me because i'm a psychic medium and and i can help you with that yeah i just feel like there's a little bit of a telling off for maybe some of you who aren't taking that gift seriously you kind of know it's there but you're too scared to maybe look into it and pretend it's not there <laughs> maybe and your guides are kind of saying you know you can't hide from this and bury it forever because it's it's creating so much so many issues in your life physically and emotionally um and maybe using substances or shopping or gambling or some sort of unhealthy attachment in order to cover up some of the issues that this um hidden gift is giving you 
including the cords that you have um, attached with people, things, throughout trying to find these quick fixes of coping mechanisms to try and deal with this gift that is within you. You have this gift and the more you deny it, the stronger these negative cords are getting. So it's really worth trying to access your spirit guides to get a little bit more advice. We'll see what else comes out in the reading as well. For your next cards, it's suggesting that for a lot of people, this is quite new or you're still trying to find your feet in regards to these gifts that you have, or it might be brand new and this might be news to you actually. But it's saying that even if you don't feel very prepared or you may even feel a bit fearful or resistant, you should try to do it anyway. And that's why that solar plexus has come up again, because it's about finding the, the courage to actually go for it, even if you're not 100 percent sure what it entails, obviously safely and in a protective way. I seek out somebody who can guide you and help you in that, but it is something that you, you can't deny, you can't keep ignoring. Even if all you do is get to a point where you can quieten it or control it um, and you don't have to use it, but it you need to try and get to a point where you're at least kind of in, in control of it and everything, you can turn it on and off so then you're not being run by the gift, you're running the gift, if that makes sense. You are in a transition period um and sometimes it can feel like the analogy is sort of being driving in a foggy road and sometimes you can only see a few a couple of feet in front of you but as you get through that but you can see it and you can see it and this is kind of like what you're at this stage or maybe in your life in general where you're feeling like you can only see about a foot in front of you and it's through that faith and it's through keep um, following your heart as well, maybe that's why Jade came up, that you can know you're going in the right direction and have faith that these guides are here to help you to make sure that you stay on the, the road and that you aren't going to go the wrong way inside this fog. It, it's also saying that you are, um, I guess, like a really important person. I mean, everyone is in their own way, but I feel like, you know, again, you don't have to, but this gift could actually be used to benefit the world in some way and that may be because you are then able to pass on your wisdom to someone else who's maybe going through a similar thing or it may be that you can really help people to work through their grief and the connections that they have it could be any of these situations where if you come the other side of a not very nice connection or if you are able to speak with those who have passed and get some closure and maybe in some way some of you will be able to do that for other people as well and that will really help but I just think in general that you are here for a purpose you're here to advance the world and to open their eyes up open their minds up to things that maybe aren't right there in front of them and to really think about the possibilities instead of raising consciousness i suppose is the, is what i want to say and you know i was saying about that heart calling what you're being pulled to and this is really saying that you you need to try and answer that call you're being divinely guided by these different spirit guides being asked to answer that call something's being you're being pulled towards something i mean you have that stone circle in that other card so maybe you're being asked to pulled to go towards of ancient or uh, spiritual places like hinges you know stone circles and everything because it is thought that when you visit those kind of places you kind of tap into old wisdom of those who have passed you know those ancestors that came up at the beginning but also your own subconscious wisdom that you've kind of buried or forgotten about as well so maybe you visit some of those places you're being pulled towards it could also be that you've had past lives there as well and it'll all come you know rushing back to you uh, but just whatever it is, it's, you know what your soul yearns for, you know what you're being driven to do. It may not be in connection to spirituality, it might be just saying in general, you need to pick what's really important to you. And when you're inserting those boundaries, are you stopping yourself from fulfilling a dream or going somewhere or doing something because of somebody else? And so this is really saying, don't overthink it, don't wait for permission. This is a yes. So whatever you've been thinking of doing, whether it's studying something or whether it's moving or job, whatever, this is spirits worth saying, yes, you really should do this. You should take this first step. 
You need to have the faith and courage to answer this call that's pull it, pulling you. Have that courage to do what many other people haven't been able to do. If this is something you've already done, uh, this is saying you are exactly in the right place and they're kind of congratulating you for having that bravery to do something that maybe is a little bit unusual or maybe completely change your life in some way. And and as I said, you just you don't need permission. You just have to follow that intuition, that gut. You know, both these things came up and do whatever it is that you're being pulled to do. So let's have a look at your charms. As always, just have a look through the letters. There could be anything that comes up, initials, names, places. Um, maybe we'll get the keepers on there. I'm not sure. I don't think we have. We've got all for Odin. <laughs> Um, so let's have a look. I mean, we've got the crown. I mean, that always makes me think of someone who is super important. I have mentioned that a few times, as is everyone, obviously. But I feel like you've got the potential to almost be like a spiritual leader. Somebody who can not only learn about their own gift, but help other people in theirs as well. Um, so that's something to totally think about. Um, and Tweety being there is really interesting because I think sometimes things spirit energy may come to us in certain forms but actually we have to be very careful i mean i think um reva mentioned ouija boards there could be people in this group who have dabbled in that and just be careful because obviously if you're not very experienced um with that and with spirit communication you could be taken advantage of somewhat especially if you have lost your mother mm -hmm. and just being careful about who you're really speaking to is someone like that but also this could be just that your ancestor, actually your relative talking to you is your mother. So this is kind of, they're working with you. It could also be on your mother's line. Anyone in that line. It's, yeah, I feel like it's just saying that someone around you as well could be not being genuine, could be um, actually using you or not what they seem. So just be aware of the connections that you have. And as we said, listen to that intuition as to whether or not those friends are really your friends, whether or not you can trust in certain people. Also, um, you're a light worker. You know, it mm -hmm. reiterates that beacon that Luna spoke about, that you're here to help others. Again, there's no pressure. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do, but you do have that potential to help others in a lot of ways in a spiritual sense, or at least... It doesn't have to be just spiritual, but there will be a spiritual aspect because your gifts will help you in other ways as well. I mentioned about totally changing your life and that's come up again. So either this is suggesting there's some big changes that you could make or that you have decided to do something quite radical or different than what you did. And they're really happy with that. It also suggests that you could be a really good problem solver. You're really someone who sees things outside the box or in a different way. Or it could be asking you to try and gain a different perspective about a person, a situation in your life, maybe make a plan um, in order to, to decide what to do going forward. It also does suggest that you may uh, benefit in doing some sort of study. So if you have been thinking of or if you've started studying something particularly about a spiritual gift, um, we have got mediumship courses that you can take part in if that is something that you're interested in. So just message us if you want to know more. This does really um, suggest that you are being encouraged to take that leadership um, role to, whether that's in a, an area of life, like a job or whatever, or whether it's just taking leadership of your own life because of that independence that's there as well. It's about being okay with doing things without needing the, as, as it came up in the cards, the permission or the okay from somebody else. You know, don't always wait for someone else's opinion before you've decided what you want to do. Just do what you feel like you really need to and want to do. Because it could be that you're a bit of an overthinker, an over-warrior. Um, and so that grounding tech, you know, find some grounding techniques to really calm you. And, um, you know, there's quite a lot of things about, taking a break and chilling out and um, taking a step back and that kind of thing, because it could be that you do get quite overwhelmed and 
um, inundated. It could be that energy that's around you. It could be the opinions of people and all this. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, take a step back and chill out and do what it is that you are being pulled to do, whether that's your intuition, your instinct, your heart, whichever one that you really resonate with, something inside you is telling you what you need to do or what you need to avoid or, and you need to really start listening to that. So if you would like any support about any of those messages, please do get in touch. Um, if you've liked the reading, please do like the video and leave us a comment. Let us know what you're connected with. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and that will keep you in touch with all of our readings. Thank you so much for watching. Hi group two, the crystal you chose is Blue Lace Agate. This crystal is very much connected to the throat chakra, so that could be a message already saying that this is what it involves, things in that area, and the need to assert your needs, the need to be genuine, um, to communicate in a better way, or things like that. It also does point to kind of hidden messages, so it may be that you are able to channel messages in some way. It could be also that you are an astral projector or you're aware of different planes of existence, you're able to connect to them. You seem to have a really cool and calming energy about you or you have the potential to. Some of you may kind of get all that energy emotion pent up. So it's really important that you find healthy outlets for that emotion. It could be that some of your power comes in your emotion, but if you don't have a healthy outlet, if you don't have a way to express it in a, a calming way, or you don't find ways to calm yourself, then it could explode, you know, or you could feel very overwhelmed about it. Um, you may have a very overactive mind that goes whirling all the time. You may have things that not very nice things go through your mind because of that worry that goes round and round. You might kind of wind yourself up. And so it's important that you do find ways to deal with that in some way. That communicative, it could be about writing it down, it could be about visiting a therapist, talking through it with a, a loved one or something like that. It could also be that you sometimes don't feel like you belong in this world. Now that could be because you have strong connections to Starseed. If you don't know a lot about that, it might be worth you looking it up. But it's it could be that you're so connected with an existence, like I said, about different planes about other worlds that it, you find it quite hard to maybe feel like you properly belong here or sometimes you, that overwhelmness could be almost like you don't feel normal if you know what I mean you don't feel like this is your body or you feel quite disassociated from your human life and this could be why because there are some connections that you need to explore and maybe even heal from but integrate all these different parts of you so that they aren't feeling disjointed and pulling you apart yeah, so I feel like Starseed or um, sort of otherworldly kind of past lives impact you. One of your um, guides at the moment is Lady Venus and she's part of the astral rem realm. So that also reiterates the idea that you could be astrally projecting without even maybe knowing it. If you are tired without any real explanation or you are having real trouble sleeping or real vivid dreams, um, anything to do with your sleep really um, that's kind of suggesting from your guides that that's what's happening and you need to learn more about it even if you're a bit scared of it because it's happening whether you like it or not and it's worth trying to learn about it and learn how to protect yourself within that um, your other guides Lady Portia, Joan of Arc so there's a lot of things around here about speaking your truth um, speaking what you feel is right um, not holding yourself back. So there was a lot of communicative things with the Blue Lace Gate. All three are very feminine upper three chakra um, guides. So it could be that those chakras are very strong with you, the throat, third eye and crown, but also the ones you have the most difficulty with. It could be that you are so much connected with your divine feminine that you're out of balance with the masculine. So you find it very hard to be grounded and you can get yourself kind of wound up and I think Raven even mentioned overwhelmed worrier I feel like you maybe even get intrusive thoughts um even maybe scary nasty dreams things like that that can impact you so um yeah so these are your guides I mean if you could be drawn to one in particular so look into them a little bit more what they mean for you personally as a guide or it could be all three um I feel like for this group I think at least 
all of them could be working with you in some way because I feel like they're also connected and you being able to access those hidden gifts and also be able to express your emotions healthily and speak your truth healthily. We move on to your tarot and some of the messages might, that might come through. We've got a reiteration of that restful time that's needed and it seems like you're not necessarily getting that time it might be that you feel like you're sleeping okay but you still wake up really tired and this reiterates what Luna said about the fact that you may be astral projecting you may be visiting other worlds maybe even through time and all sorts of things and so you need to find ways to anchor yourself and protect yourself so that you don't do that one way is it didn't come up but um, hematite is a really good anchoring stone that you could have by your bed and you can also just practice astral projection or things like that anyway so then you can kind of control it you can switch it on and off if you, this is a gift that you have that you didn't realize it can kind of control you instead of you controlling it it could also be that this is suggesting that people in this group find a time in the day to meditate what we mean by that it is it can be different things really it can be about finding calm in your mind which might help the people in this group but it can also be to connect with these guides to download any messages that they may have but also to upgrade as well. Uh, Reiki is another good thing to do for that. And in that way, it's not happening while you're asleep, whilst your body is trying to rest and recover. You're not doing lots of spiritual things at the same time because you've already taken that time out to do it. And I think that is what this is saying. It could also be a reiteration there of some star seeds in this group and of not feeling of this world. Definitely the need to communicate uh, more effectively, to work on that, to assert your needs, your boundaries could also be that some of you are going through some sort of spiritual transformation or there is that need to upgrade so you need to meditate or use reiki in order to do that that's the easiest way you can do it and there also are some really sensitive people in this group our empaths or people who are very emotional or are picking up the emotions of other people and you need to try to realize which is which so you're not like if you suddenly feel really upset out of nowhere quite possibly you're picking up from the person or environment or maybe even what you're watching you know it could be that you're ultra sensitive to that energy so much more than you even realize so energetic protection being aware of who or what is around you and learning what's your energy and what isn't so that you're not feeling overwhelmed by all these different bombardments of different emotions so if we go to your work your light cards we have the yes card now in the book it literally will just says yes all the way through if i remember rightly <laughs> So I don't think there's much else to say other than there's a um, an idea here that everyone in this group are getting a message from their spirit guide team that they're on the right track. Yes, it feels like sometimes you're not. Yes, it can be difficult. But where you are at right now is where you should be. You're on the right track. It could also be that you... Um, hold yourself back from the world quite a lot we have said about you being able to express yourself a bit more a bit more healthily um, speak your truth more set boundaries so maybe yes is a word you may say too much and you need to start saying no a bit more or it could be that you hold yourself back from fear and don't um, take the leap and do new things out of fear um, and put things off and procrastinate so maybe just say yes a little bit more in certain circumstances to push that comfort zone and keep learning yeah, it's knowing what's right for you isn't it and taking yeah. that step back before that automatic reaction if you normally say no a lot try to pause and think about whether you used to say yes and vice versa and yeah. really listening to what you really feel you know there's so much communication in your reading and it just feels like it could be that you, you've got a lot going on or you're involved in a lot of things, people. Mm -hmm. And so it's sometimes you're on like automatic. Mm -hmm. And and so your reactions are, are very just quick. And it's just like maybe try to pause before actually organising everything or automatically reacting in a way that you always do. Definitely need to, to rest, recharge. Um, I think it's, this is reiterating all the things about the sleep as well, mm -hmm. with this group having so much trouble with them being able to rest. If it's not during the night with your actual sleep, it could just be not being able to pause, not being able to stand, sit still, or to maybe let someone else 
do something whilst you're maybe you almost feel guilty if you rest or you've got nothing to do quote unquote um and so it's, it's the saying take that day off and actually don't do anything just let your body recharge if you're doing lots of things or you're finally doing things you've, you've got time for because you've been doing everything else you're never actually properly stopping and resting and again if this is in a spiritual sense as well it's just not having a chance to have those that transformation that's trying to go on on within you um it's also like do you pause after whether it's a manifestation whether it's something you've created whether it's something that you should feel proud of do you actually stop and think you know i'm really happy about that are you able to pat yourself on the back and acknowledge what you've been through what you've managed to make or or do or um, like, do you, do you, are you quite mean about yourself sometimes? Or maybe feel like nothing's ever good enough? Now, some of these things can come from learned behaviours, limiting beliefs from childhood and that kind of thing. But some of it's just this habit that we build up around us. Sometimes it can be quite an innocent thing about staying humble. Now, being humble is, is okay. But when it gets to the point where you can't literally say, give yourself a well done, or even just acknowledge that, you know, today was a difficult day and I got through it and that's great. Then these are all things that your guides are asking you to do, whether it's something like a big project or a, a manifested a massive thing in your life, or whether it's being able to just take some time to rest or to go for a walk or um, actually give you yourself some self care or some you time all those things are great and you need to acknowledge that within yourself. The journey you've already accomplished now, you know, did you set the boundary where normally, did you say yes where you'd normally say no? You know, these are all amazing things that you need to acknowledge before rushing on to the next thing as well. And it's also about staying grateful and noticing those things that happen. What have you already manifested? What have you already, what do you already have now that you didn't have a few years ago and you really wanted? You've manifested that. So that's great. And you do have this power and maybe that's it too. It's reminding you of the power you have to make these changes in your life. It's not all out of your hands. So let's have a look at your charms. So we'll have a look through the letters as always. If you see anything that resonates, please let us know. It's always good to know. I'm not surprised to see the self, um, self being written there because it does feel like this needs to be like a very personal journey. This is, you're going through, I feel maybe just a transformation and upgrade in your gifts and your spirit team would like you to nurture yourself, got the strawberry, really looking after yourself, eating nourishingly. Um, and trying not to consume things that you know won't help you. And with the root chakra being there, there's also that reiteration about looking after your physical body a little bit more. Maybe movement, exercise, coupled with eating nourishingly, things that you know are good for you. And that helps you feel grounded, actually. I think you probably will see the benefit from um coupling those things together and if you already do things like yoga and exercise and looking after yourself i bet you can tell when you haven't done it you know i bet things it, you know your body just feels dead sluggish when you don't so i think there's just that uh, message there from you guys to see it look after your physical body it's also when you get overwhelmed you know, you're trying to balance out that divine feminine that luna talked about the three upper chakras with the lower ones so especially the root seems to be the one that will help you really do that not only is it about safety and uh, feeling secure, but actual grounding techniques such as being out in nature, barefoot on the grass and um, eating actually itself. So not only are you nourishing your body, as Luna said, and taking care of it, but it's actually a technique to help you feel less overwhelmed. You're a very busy person, very busy bee, <laughs> doing things all the time or that could be your mind too, but that tends to be a physical thing. Someone who's actually doing a lot all the time and not really having a proper time to rest. It could also be that you need a, a better nighttime routine. It could be that you are doing things right up to the point of sleep and you're not shutting down properly. 
So it'll be different for different people, but I would say at least an hour of no screen time um, or definitely not work. Or I know people, it'll be different for different people because if you have kids and they're not, they're not, they're not all settled, do they? And things like that. But do try to see if there's anything you can do about your nighttime routine. And this has to be a routine. It has to be regular. It can't just be one or two days a week. It has to be every day that you do these things because the body likes routine. The body likes knowing what's coming next. So if you um, maybe not eating too late or drinking too late, especially if you know you're going to be up in the night and things like that, and just listening to your body more. It also reiterates that need for communication, perhaps study too. There could be some studying that you can do in regards to some of these things about boundaries, self-love, nutrition even, and things like that, that could actually help with these messages that are coming through with your guides. And also the need to, it's something about your partner, most likely a romantic partner, but it could be someone you just feel really, really close with. Um, and it, maybe it's the need to communicate with your partner to, or you have a bit of difficulty surrounding that. Um, it does seem feel like you're close though. So it's not like, and there's no indication here that you're unable to do that because, you know, there's no unhealthiness here. It's just sometimes it can be maybe quite hard to understand each other or put across your needs in a way that each other understand. Maybe you just have different needs, different ways of seeing things, and it can be quite difficult to understand that. So working together with either a romantic partner or someone you really trust and love, and or maybe you could do it together. You know, it's, you can't really change your life or have a routine without the other person on board. Or maybe you're someone who needs someone to keep them going on, say, a, a healthier diet, or uh, maybe you want to exercise together or something like that. And then you can keep each other going with your motivation. It does seem like for some people, if you aren't with someone, uh, there could be some, it hasn't actually come up that much um, with your the rest of your reading, but it does suggest that you may have had some difficulties regarding love, not necessarily romantic, in your relationship, in your life, that could be holding you back a little bit. So it could be why you find it hard to communicate. It could be why you're, you, you find it difficult to ask for help or to delegate. It could be that you're someone who just is used to just getting on with things. And so to have somebody to ask if you want help or to confide in or to show vulnerability to might be quite difficult for you. But this does suggest this is something you need to think about now, really. It is something that is impacting you quite heavily. And you think about it, sleep is so important for so many things of your body. So if it is particularly that you rest, that you're lacking, it's going to have a knock-on effect with everything else. So we, I do suggest this is something that you really look into now or find someone to help you with because this will really open doors to other things as well. It's impacting other areas of your life. I'm not sure why the um, Lucky Charms there particularly, it seems a little bit random, but I think it's kind of, it could be saying you're luckier than you think you are. You know, in those times where you feel like you've got a bit of bad luck or other people have better luck than you, luck is what you make it, it's the mindset that you have. So it's maybe trying to turn a thought around, especially if you do have an intrusive or not very nice thoughts, and trying to look at things in a different way so that you can see just how much better your life is than maybe you realise at times. So if you would like any support about any of those messages, please do get in touch. Or if you would like a more personalised reading, all of our contact details are just in the description below. Please do like the video and leave us a comment if you've connected with that reading, if you've enjoyed it. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that will keep you in touch with all of our readings. Thank you so much for watching. Hi group three, the crystal you chose is Moss Agate. This crystal suggests firstly that it could be connected to your heart chakra, so this could be a message about working with that area of your body. It also suggests that you need to relax a bit more, open up a bit more. That could be about how you are with people, it could be that you're keeping something to yourself or you hold on to a lot of emotion, you maybe don't have a healthy outlet for that emotion or maybe you're not able to express yourself. I mean, that's more throat chakra, but it's kind of, because it's heart chakra based, it suggests it's going to be about your connections, your love uh, relationships and that kind of thing. And maybe you're not being wholly truthful or 
can't always put across what you really need in the moment. It also suggests that you may be feeling quite down. Either generally you may be not so much of an optimistic person. You may see things in a little bit of a, in a light that's not as, as bright or as cheery. Um, so this suggests maybe that you should see things, maybe try and see things in a different way. It's hard to break that habit of seeing things. You may see it as realistic, but if you're thinking about all the worst case scenarios of a situation, you're probably never ever going to actually go for anything. It could be that you are a bit of an overthinker and, and quite logical. And maybe that's where that heart comes in, that actually it's more your heart that you need to follow, not just your head all the time. It also suggests you might be holding yourself back a little bit that through this um, over analytical or logical side and the potential of not actually going for things, you might not actually be tapping into those opportunities that are pre being presented to you. It might be that you want to manifest certain things, but you're not actually either noticing or taking the opportunities as they come in. So you're actually losing out on a lot of things in your life, particularly in regards to love, relationships and things that you really enjoy and love to do because you aren't open to that and you don't necessarily see things in a way that are beneficial for you at this time it seems yeah okay so the keepers that have come out for you your spirit guides that could be working with you right now are kalimar freya and isis now three very strong feminine um badass energies <laughs> all around transformation changes and um, things coming into being so it could be that you are going through major changes in your life right now that could be physically or um spiritually um there could be some issues regarding things that have happened in your past that are impacting you still now so maybe you've had things really really tough there's been constant changes constant battles so you feel which has led to this kind of more pessimistic viewpoint where you maybe come from a place of fear quite a lot or you um as raven mentioned maybe say things um straight away in the more negative point of view rather than positive and that's come from a place of trauma and experience don't get me wrong but your spirit guides are here to support you with that and try and help you turn that around because remember with everything that ends um new things begin so try and let go and heal and better things will come because it does feel like you're a bit of a master manifester and you can bring things into being but when they come it's like you get scared or feel like you're not worthy of those good things and then bad things start happening and then you're like well of course this always happens to me as soon as something good happens something bad then happens um and it's kind of um self-fulfilling prophecy yeah exactly so your guides are really strong powerful energies that are around you to try and support you to heal from those ways of being and those limiting beliefs so that you are able to step into your power more and um, free is very much connected to the sacral sac chakra so it could be that you have some issues around um fertility reproductive area lower abdomen um if you have periods it could be that your menstrual cycle is a bit of an issue for you and isis and kalimar generally can be around the third eye area so those could be areas that you work on in your energy body we move on to your tarot and the messages that might come up i think it's true that there is a conflict in you at the moment of these changes that are happening now the practical things could be that you are going to get married or you're getting engaged or you may be thinking of uh, having a family having a baby or something like that just thinking of starting a business something that's that you want that's your baby if you like but doesn't have to be an actual baby and there's this voice of fear that's battling with your actual intuition so working with your third eye as luna just said will help you to know the difference your voice of fear it seems like it's keeping you safe but really what it's doing is keeping you stagnant it's keeping you still it's stopping you from progressing or reaching that potential that i mentioned whereas your intuition really is keeping you safe or it really is trying to keep you on the right path and it's a sensitivity of energy around the situation and they're two different things if you don't work with your intuition though if you don't build up you know you think about if you want to build up a muscle you have to do it often don't you you know want to build up your arm muscles you do some weights you want to build up your third eye muscle you have to actually practice so you could do some uh sort of 
practice games, just silly things like guessing what's in a box before looking or memory games and things like that, that actually can help with your third eye because it's the same area. And then you're more likely to trust what voice you should listen to instead of that self-sabotaging one that says, this is too scary, you shouldn't do that, you're not good enough for that, and all these not so nice thoughts, then you could actually listen to your real intuition, which says, maybe you shouldn't go for that one, okay, but this one's better instead, or even subtle things like, it might tell you to go a different way to work, because actually you could meet somebody that's going to make some changes in your life, and things like that, so I really do recommend that you work on that area of your life, um, uh, sorry, area of your body, in order to really hone in that intuitive gift that I feel that you have within you. You definitely have a very nurturing energy. I think people say you're almost like a mother of the group. I feel like you've built up this really big resilience to life because of hardships you've overcome um, so that you become quite a protective, nurturing person. You want to make everyone feel good and look after people because I think you don't want anyone to have to experience what you have and that's lovely but then also while you're looking after everybody else, I think then you're struggling with being able to look after yourself. So just definitely work on that balance. It's also about celebrating life. And you know, we're saying about maybe you have a slightly more negative view of the world and it is finding ways to see the beauty in the world or to celebrate the things that I think I mentioned actually that are actually going well in your life, even if they're small things. It's not to say that if you see something that you can't be sad about something or disappointed or realistic like I said but at the same time sometimes we can get really bogged down with all the things that aren't going right instead of looking at the things that are or as Luna said not assuming that something's going to go wrong if things are, are going okay because the energy that you're putting into it this isn't like a blame game I'm not saying oh because you thought that way that's why it happened it's just the energy around you you want to try and empower yourself by mm. seeing things in a much nicer light and knowing you deserve that thing don't assume that it's going to go wrong or it's not going to work out because it's you because that's what it's actually coming from it's this belief in you somewhere that's saying that nice things don't happen to you or things have to be hard and these are limiting beliefs that you may have grown up with you may have held on to either this life or even past lives could be surrounding a death of a past life as well with Kalima coming up that you do need to work through so that it's not holding you back it's not making you assume that everything's going to go wrong the other thing is not just your inner voice but the outer voices as well those ones who are trying to sabotage your um you trusting in yourself your intuition your heart by telling you things about yourself as i said there's those learned behaviors and limiting beliefs but maybe people still are making you feel bad about yourself or making you mistrust in your judgment and they may they may say it's from a place of love or even believe it's from a place of love but in that they are actually just stopping you and so when you think that can definitely not help with manifesting so if you have an, an idea or a plan a dream of some kind it might be better to be careful about who you're actually sharing that with who you decide to recruit if you like in your journey towards making that actually happen because unfortunately some people the pessimism might not be coming from you it might be coming from other, someone else they may be a bit of a negative nelly be a bit of a dampener on your situation and then they might put you off or make you start thinking like overthinking something so if you have a plan they might be like oh what about that what about that what about that and as I say, it's it's okay to have a plan B or think through these options and be ready in case things don't go well. But if you have that person constantly making you worry about what might happen, you may never actually take that leap to even go into starting something in the first place. I'm not surprised to see a transformation card with the work the light oracle, just because we talk about quite a lot of transformation energy with Kalimar and Freya, even Isis, all around sort of those cycles and changes, rebirths. And I just think you've had to deal with a lot of that, but it could be that you're going through something quite big right now, even at a deep cell level, at a soul level, where um, gifts are either upgrading not changing, or you're learning something completely new about yourself. Maybe you've done some past life healing recently or something like that. 
um, and it's just very powerful energy. So your spirit guides are around you to support that transformation time. Yeah, definitely a lot of changes, especially on a deep cellular level, as Luna said. Um, and it's this need to embrace this transformation that's happening, whether that's inside you or outside you. Um, this is a time of releasing old ways of being. And it's interesting that it's about kind of the the kind of fight, flight, freeze type mentality that you may have. You know, we we're saying about assuming the worst and maybe you've been through a lot where your reaction is quite defensive or is in this sense of you having to work for something. And so working through these old um, traumas or difficult times will actually help it not be the driving force of your decisions of what you do in your life. And instead you can actually listen to, as I said, your intuition instead of your voice of fear also also reiterates again those old childhood patterns that need to be healed observe them feel them um remove those attachments from your heart chakra and also find ways there's that very mothering nurturing energy throughout your reading so it could very well point to a mother figure that you have a lot of difficulties with but it's about nurturing yourself it's about mothering yourself finding ways to give yourself what you need and especially if you haven't necessarily got that from other people it also suggests that um you don't kind of have to put so much pressure on yourself to be a certain way or to do a certain thing especially if you are a mother yourself there could be or a parent yourself it could be that you do you put a lot of pressure on yourself especially if you don't didn't have such a good upbringing do you know what i mean no i'm never going to be like them but in that are you staying true to yourself at the same time? And it doesn't have to be that you always put your children before yourself to make yourself a good parent. There still has to be that balance. And again, the heart chakra is all about balance in your relationships, even with your kids. It also suggests the need to review your relationship with your body, looking at your diet, um, movement. And also it could be that you need some energetic healing support from someone outside so maybe seek someone for reiki healing or chakra healing past life something like that whereby those childhood inner child things may come up and they can help you heal from that so during this I, you know i just said about maybe seeking out someone to help you with that but actually it's calling to you to listen to your intuition in regards to where it guides you um like soul family type groups, people who are like-minded, who can help you with this transformation. This may be especially for those who don't know a huge amount about spirituality or a certain part of it, and you might wonder where you even start with it. And that could be what it's encouraging you to do, to maybe join a group. We have um, a witch workshop group that you may want to join if that's something that interests you, or um, you can always speak to us if you ever want any advice or guidance towards anything to do with spirituality so this is really pushing you to to gather to to get together with other people maybe even lead them in a way um it could be also that that mother aspect is because you could be here to heal your ancestral line as well so those cords aren't just the ones that are attached to you and your past but those of your lineage and you have ancestors in every life as well if you believe in reincarnation so it's all these different potential ancestral um, things that need to be healed so that they don't keep repeating throughout. Um, I mentioned potential and, and this really reiterates that. It's saying that there's something for you to devote yourself to, something greater than yourself, something where your voice in, is heard and, and you're seen. It could be that you have often made yourself invisible or been quite happy to blend into the background or even just felt invisible and this is encouraging you to try to step up be the real authentic true you share whatever medicine you have with the world everyone does it differently everyone has their own unique way of helping others and this is really encouraging you to do that to search for um, your tribe your soul tribe your spiritual tribe who can appreciate you for who you really are instead of maybe these slightly negative or people who just don't understand who you are anymore when you go through spiritual transformations quite often that happens people fall away 
things fall away, things just don't work anymore because you're not the same person you were probably a year ago. This seems like it was in the last 12 months, especially, but it could be many years where you've been going through this. And now you're realizing that certain people just don't fit anymore. It could especially be your mother because that's come up, but anyone who maybe just doesn't understand or resonate with what you do. So it's time for you to find people who do. So let's have a look at your charms. So as always, just have a look through those letters and see if anything resonates. Let us know if any of the um, letters mean anything to you and that these names or initials or places, anything like that. Um, the dummy does suggest that um, in a child healing, maybe even just something to do with past lives and lineage, just that kind of backtracking um, to a core reason why you struggle so much with either change or um, people around you not wanting what's best for you, this negative mindset and trying to understand it a bit more by seeking the source out, if you know what I mean. Some of those people could be actually a partner um, or it could be that you want a partner and this is encouraging you to embrace those opportunities, those changes, listening to that inner voice to guide you to the, a person who will really be able to appreciate you for who you are. Um, to maybe even understand you on a spiritual soul level as well. Someone who's a really deep connection that isn't just going to pass you by quite quickly. This suggests that you're a really unique force. And I mentioned uniqueness in your last cards, actually. Yeah. Um, there's something about you that's very different from many other people. There's a skill or an ability you have that's a bit more unusual. And the world is less without you in it or you sharing that with people. Again, you know, there's no pressure to do anything that you don't feel comfortable with. And this does have to be your journey and you have to do things in your own time. But with that self-sabotage and thing that came up, it could be that you do just need that push, that gentle nudge in order to embrace that about yourself. It could be that you've been having, it hasn't really come up much, but you could be ever having nightmares of some kind, or it could be that you've been having trouble sleeping. That could also indicate just that you should follow your dreams, that you should follow. You might be quite good at visualizing, or it might be that it's through your dreams that things do manifest. So that could be something for you to look into. If it is something to do with nighttime things and not feeling very safe, Isis actually can be a really good home protector. So you can envision her um, on top of your roof or in your room or, you know, and just guarding you with that protective energy. So that could be a message for some people. There are some people in your life who, or some situations some things, or some things from your past that you do need to try and get rid of, slay, because the dragon often comes up when there's something that's really quite powerful that's kind of attached to you or holding on to you. Um, I don't mean that in a sense of a um, an attachment. I just mean a, a, probably an um, energetic cord of some kind that really does need to be severed at last. Um, we've got a couple of things with the Monday and the feminine. It's very feminine energy with this group. And I said that right at the beginning, really powerful, badass women, <laughs> um, feminine energies at least. Um, so yeah, it, it, there's kind of some balancing maybe needed with your divine masculine as well and being able to access both sides of you. Because it seems like you're definitely living in the feminine a lot more. Um, Sagittarius is there, which is about being quite optimistic. They're quite optimistic and they seem to be quite bubbly people. So in general, it's kind of being able to learn, channel that Sagittarius energy of being a bit more optimistic and trying to not come from that place of pessimism when things happen in your life. It could be that Sagittarius is relevant to you and your birth chart or someone close to you as well. It could be the, the literal sense of it could be that you're thinking of studying or, or having a business or working with photography. It could be that that's a, a hobby you want to pick up more, but it could also be about how the lens that you look through in your life and that you can change that lens. You think about it in the sense of a camera, you can take it off, you can put a new one on. And this is what I feel like your guides are suggesting you do in regards to your life in general. Now, I haven't lived your life and I don't know what you've been through and I'm not here to decide, judge or demand that you react in a certain way, depending on the experiences that you've had. However, your guides are asking you to try to start to work through them or find someone to help you do that. 
so that they aren't you think about it you're looking through a dirty lens a lens that's been impacted by all the things that have already happened to you and you're instead of actually cleaning it off and seeing things that as they happen at the time being present being in the moment you're always looking through that lens of what has happened before so that's why you need to try and work through these things and try to disconnect from them heal from them it could also be that um it's, it's a bit of an odd, I don't think this will be true for many people, but it could be that you have had a child um, and you either want to or you don't want to have them christened or dedicated to a, a religion of some kind or and you either do or you don't and, the, and maybe your partner or someone in your life does or doesn't. So whichever one you feel resonates, I feel like this is about looking at why you don't or you do. Um, and obviously communicating that with whoever it is that's that's against you or if it's not someone else that's involved in it it's just you wondering whether to do it or not think about why that is how you want to do it I think it's more like you don't want to do it and you don't know why um, if it comes from more of a place of fear that's something for you to work through and, and talk through but if it comes from a place of I really don't want that to happen and someone's trying to make you feel bad about it I feel like you should really assert that don't do things that you don't feel comfortable with or are not ready for at the time the, one of your things that you really want to do um you know think about transformation and change some of them could be small some of them can be massive it could be about you moving or it could be about you going to a different country or taking a year out to travel or something like that um and it's again that reiteration of embracing these changes embracing the things that you can't make yourself be okay with change, but you can work towards, sometimes it's it's the fear, isn't it? It's the want of a better word, control, because you know what's gonna happen and changes can really kind of trigger you if you've had a difficult past, especially. So it's finding ways to be a bit better with change, maybe be a bit more spontaneous or go a different way to work or do something different on a Saturday or a Monday um, so that you're used to little changes and then you can hopefully be a bit better with bigger changes and with those changes that are happening they're within you too you aren't resisting that transformation that's trying to go on within you that soul transformation that's developing you that's putting you on either the right or a different spiritual path which will actually open doors, will open up opportunities to all these things that you really want to manifest. So if you would like support with any of that reading or would like a more personalised reading, please do get in touch. We'd love to work with you. All of our contact details are just in the description below. If you've enjoyed the reading, please do like the video and leave us a comment. Let us know what you've connected with. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and that will keep you in touch with all of our readings. Thank you so much for watching.